7 o'clock, yeah. Yep, right on the dot. Well, good evening, sisters and brothers, and happy Friday to you. We've made it through another week together, and as every week passes, it means we're another week closer to uh, being done, hopefully with uh, quarantines, sheltering in place, and all the other kinds of restrictions that we are, are currently under. Uh, again, let's just take it day by day, because that's really all that we can do, uh, COVID or not. All we can do is take these things day by day as we progress a little a little closer towards uh, normal, or whatever that may look like when we're all done with this. Always a pleasure to have you with us. We are still in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Tonight we're going to finish up our discussion of where Jesus is. Uh, he's been talking with Nicodemus, and now he's into a discussion about uh, various uh, different metaphors. We've talked about being born again. we talked about light and dark. And we're going to continue that discussion of light and dark tonight as we get into our, to our studies here. Um, again, just a reminder, we are live Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock right here on the Facebook page. Each and every one of our sessions, as always, is saved over on uh, the YouTube channel as well, as well as being saved here. Uh, and then tomorrow will be a video uh, that's a combination of me for a little bit, and then also Dr. Witherington for the, the larger portion of it that I'll load uh, sometime tomorrow morning for you to watch. Really, it just acts as a, as a summation of the five days that we've had together uh, during this particular week. Um, before we start, we'll, we'll do a prayer here in a little bit. Just want to remind everybody that, um, you know, we will worship together on, on Sunday. Uh, take advantage of whatever worship services that you, you are comfortable with, whichever worship services you can get to. I know for the three churches that I serve, I'll record a, a worship service that will be on those Facebook pages, both Trinity and Sharon's Facebook pages on Sunday morning. And then we do have the drive-in worship over at Camden uh, Sunday at, at 11 o'clock. But do take advantage of the worship opportunities that are there and available uh, to you in your particular area and in your community. Having said all that, I want to invite you to join me as we get ready to start tonight's session as we go to the Lord in prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how I thank you for your provision through Christ to become your child and for the incredible privilege of belonging to your family. Tonight, Lord, I come before you on behalf of all my brothers and sisters and I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you reveal to each of us the ways in which we have not yet fully embraced our sonship. You have lavished your incredible love on us through Christ Jesus, making us your children. And yet, O oh God, in so many ways, we continue to live as orphans. Forgive us, I pray. Help us, Father, to live as co-heirs with Christ. By your Spirit, may this truth land on our hearts and take root. May we walk in this world wearing your crown of beauty, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Blow away the ash piles of our lives by your spirit. Renew us, I pray. Heal us from emotional wounds that keep our hearts closed off or distant from you. Tear down the walls of self-protection that we have erected. May the oil of gladness be poured out on my brothers and sisters and on me and mourning and despair be banished from among us. Wrap us in your garment of praise. Remind us continually, Father, that because of Jesus, we have access to you and can run into your embrace, crying out, Abba, Father. Call your church this day by the Holy Spirit into this kind of intimate relationship with you. May my brothers and sisters in Christ, in my church family, and in my community, and all those who are watching learn to walk, to live clothed in Christ as those who are heirs to the promise adopted through Jesus into your family. This day I ask in Jesus' name all that shame, regret, unworthiness, anything that keeps us from living in the victory of the cross and as your children be broken off of the lives of my brothers and sisters. May we come alive by the Spirit into a fresh realization of what it means to be yours, turn from slavery, and walk as your children children of the light. I ask this of you, Father, in the name of my brother and my Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we all say, amen. All right, my friends, so we are still in chapter three of the Gospel of John, and tonight we're going to cover verses 19, 20, and 21. So we are Gospel of John, chapter three, verses 19, 20, and 21. 
This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Dr. Witherington then writes these words. He says, This passage should be closely compared to the similar material in John chapter 1 about light and darkness. If light means revelation, then darkness refers to the hiding of and from the truth about God, and so refers to moral as well as intellectual darkness. And here that fact is made clear. Fallen people inherently love darkness rather than light, not least because light shining in darkness exposes the darkness for what it is. One commentator graphically suggested that the situation was rather like when someone turns on the light in a basement full of bugs. They all run for cover, not wishing to be found or exposed. Maxie Dunham once suggested that many people would prefer the familiarity of a known hell, which they have learned to endure, to the frightening prospect of having to embrace by faith a better alternative, which requires a dramatic change in their lives and lifestyles. Human beings are creatures of habit. Change, especially change that requires self-sacrifice, is indeed a bridge too far for many fallen human beings. Have you ever noticed how people try to hide their bad behavior or simply in denial about it, telling lies even to themselves? And once one tells a lie to and about oneself, one eventually has to tell more lies to cover up the first one, so weaving a web around oneself that hides one from the truth, from the light. This is why our author said, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. They have nothing to fear, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to hide. There is a moral structure to the universe that ultimately favors truth and exposes lies. This is why scripture says a man reaps what he sows. Or in other words, be sure that your sins, be sure that your sins will find you out. Blessed are those who do the deeds of light and at the end have nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to hide, but rather look forward to hearing from the Lord in the end, well done, good and faithful servant. The world is suffering from truth decay and Jesus came to change all that. Not only did he bring the truth, he is the truth about humanity and God's love for us all. And a few things I want to point out that I uncovered as I was getting ready for tonight. Um, in my study Bible, it tells us that God's objective is salvation, not condemnation. But people cause their own condemnation by remaining in the darkness of evil apart from, the, from Jesus, the light. Again, God's objective is salvation, not condemnation. We talked about this one Sunday in, in, in one of the sermons uh, that I preached, how you know, the, the story of the Christian life <clears throat> is not about sin and punishment. The story of the Christian life is about creation and then restoration, right? Restoration found in, in our salvation, our salvation being gained through repentance of sin and belief in our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and, and Savior recognizing our own sin for what it is, and then realizing that we do, in fact, have a need for a Savior. One of the things we talked about last night is how the sin problem in our world seems to have increased as knowledge and awareness of the need for a Savior has decreased. So that's why you see a, a more of a, a prevalence of sin that's, that's looked at as not being that big of a deal because the need for a Savior has decreased. So sin then, in turn, has, has increased. But God's objective, as Jesus tells us in this chapter 3, is not to condemn the world, but in fact to save the world, the entire world, all of God's creation with the ability to be saved through belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I read here that Christ as the light is rejected by a dark world because their deeds are evil. Those who reject the light also hate that light, lest their deeds be exposed. In contrast to those who abhor the light, he that doeth truth or does the truth gravitates towards the light to show that his deeds are done before God. 
Christ concludes their interview with an invitation for Nicodemus to leave his darkness and unbelief and come to the light. Remember we talked about last night how uh, we're not too sure. Commentators seem to um, have some debate about whether or not some of these verses that come after Jesus talking to Nicodemus are actually Jesus' words or whether they are the words of the evangelist as a narrator. But it's making the point here that Nicodemus, who comes to Jesus at night or in the dark, is given the opportunity to come into the light, so to speak, when Jesus reveals to him about the need to be born again, or like we talked about how the Greek sometimes should be translated, being born from above. Then I want to reread something I read last night, but I think is, is probably better uh, acknowledged during this particular time when we're talking about light versus dark. So this is a repeat from last night, at least part of it is. But I want you to listen to it because I don't think it, um, I think it is, is worthy to go back over again. It says that Jesus is the light that has come into the world. And light is a good thing unless you have things to hide. God loves the world, but the world loves the darkness because the world's deeds are evil. Whoever comes to the light has nothing to fear from its penetrating glow. Nicodemus, who comes by night, has faded from the discourse by this point, but the story is not over. We will see him two more times as his faith journey continues. So again, remember, Nicodemus is invited to come into the light. And as the Gospel of John begins to play itself out, we see that Nicodemus is one who more or less tries to speak up for Jesus when he's arrested and during his sham of a trial. That Nicodemus is, along with Joseph of Arimathea, the ones who take Jesus' body after he has been crucified into the tomb. So though Nicodemus may start off a little slow from our perspective as far as his belief and understanding what Jesus is trying to teach him, because he slowly makes his way towards the light, he, becomes, he comes to understand. Remember we talked about this in, in regards to um, progressive uh, theologies or progressive revelation, how at first you understand a little bit, but then as you continue your walk in faith, you start to understand more and more and more as you, as you go along. We talked about how we should never um, make fun of or um, demean those of our brothers and sisters who are new to the faith who maybe don't have it all together. Because slowly but surely, if we help to provide them with strength and support, they'll get it, right? They'll learn more and more and more. They'll come to understand more and more and more. And who among us can, can dare say we know everything? That there is to know about God or our salvation or, or how to do it the quote-unquote right way. Because every one of us, hey, me, me, you watching there, wherever you are, we screw it up. We fail day after day, truthfully. But each new day represents a new opportunity to repent of our sins to allow the Holy Spirit to enter our bodies, our hearts, our souls, our minds, to show us and, and, and with the power of the light, shine a light into those dark places of our lives that need to be strengthened and need to be straightened. We shouldn't be afraid to bring all of our failures to the Lord because, let's face it, He knows anyway. It's not a, thing, a single thing that happens in man's heart that God does not know. So why not just go ahead and come clean, repent, and walk in the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And that's what Jesus is trying to get across to Nicodemus from these few verses. So as we come to a close for tonight's session, I want to again read a devotional. I hope you're starting to kind of get, a, get an idea of the pattern here. We're going to pray. We'll read scripture. scripture. We'll read what Dr. Witherington has to say about it. I'll throw my own two cents in here and there for what I discern from some of the commentaries I have and outside reading that I do. We'll close in a devotion. Then we'll have a closing prayer. And then we're done in about half an hour. So... Here's our devotion for, for tonight. And it is again based upon the verses that we just read tonight. It says that these verses show us the true cause of the loss of man's soul. Our Lord says to Nicodemus, This is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. The words before us form a suitable conclusion to the glorious tidings which we have just been considering. They completely clear God of injustice and the condemnation of sinners. They show in simple and unmistakable terms that, although man's salvation is entirely of God, his ruin, if he is lost, will be entirely from himself. He will reap the fruit of his own sowing. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There is no unwillingness on God's part to receive any sinner, however great his sins. God has sent light into the world, and if man will not come to the light, 
the fault is entirely on man's side. His blood will be on his own head if he makes shipwreck of his soul. The blame will be at his own door if he misses heaven. His eternal misery will be the result of his own choice. His destruction will be the work of his own hand. God loved him and was willing to save him, but he loved darkness, and therefore darkness must be his everlasting portion. He would not come to Christ, and therefore he could not have life. The truths we have been considering are peculiar, peculiarly weighty and solemn. Do we live as if we believe them? Salvation by Christ's death is close to us today. Have we embraced it by faith and made it our own? Let us never rest till we know Christ as our own Savior. Let us look to him without delay for pardon and peace if we have never looked before. Let us go on believing on him if we have already believed. Whosoever is his own, is his own gracious word. Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So again, what our author for this devotion is telling us is that why wait, right? We talked about this, I think, last night. Whether you're going to be in the camp of believers and have eternal life, or you're going to be in the camp of non-believers uh, and, and, and suffer for all eternity. And I asked the question, which one of the two camps did you, do you consider yourself to be in? And are you sure? Are you positive of which one of those two camps that you belong in? And if you're not sure, why not make the choice today, tonight, to ask Jesus into your heart, your mind, your soul as your Savior, and to dedicate your life from this point forward to leading your life in a way that Jesus would want you to live all aspects of your life. Make him the Lord of every aspect of your life. So as we close tonight with a, a time of, of prayer, I want to again remind you that if you came in late to this one, that's fine. It'll be saved here on the Facebook page, also saved on the YouTube channel I have set up here in a little bit. Uh, if you're struggling finding that, just go to YouTube and type in my name, Mark O'Neill, M-A-R-C-O apostrophe N-E-A-L. My channel should come up. Just go to playlists and playlists of everything we've done. The Gospel of Luke Bible study there, all 24 chapters is on there. Our Holy Week uh, series is on there. Our worship services are on there. This study is on there. Just go find it. It'll be there waiting for you to watch. And again, remember tomorrow there'll be a video loaded sometime, probably before lunch. I want to aim for maybe 10-ish or so. Uh, that'll be a, a summation or a wrap-up of this particular week. And then we'll be back at it next week, Monday through Friday, live at 7 o'clock right here on the Facebook page. So until then, I want to invite you to join me as we go to the Lord together in prayer. O oh, merciful heart of God, in true penitence and remorse, I open my heart to you now. Let me keep nothing hidden from you while I pray. The truth about myself is humbling, but give me courage to speak it out in your presence. What I was not too ashamed to commit, may I not be too ashamed to confess. In your wisdom, use this pain of confession as a way of making me hate the sins confessed. I confess to laziness. I confess to vanity. I confess to indulgence. I confess to the habit of lying. I confess to dishonesty. I confess to unkind words. I confess to having entertained evil thoughts. I confess to taking wrong directions in my life. I confess to lapses from faithful Christian living. O oh Lord, whose love in the human heart can burn like a fire all that is shameful and evil, let me now grasp your perfect righteousness and make it my own. Blot out all my disobedience and let my sins be covered. Help me to feel your hand upon my life, cleansing me from the stain of past wrongdoings, loosing me from the grip of evil habits, strengthening me in new habits of pure heartedness, and guiding my footsteps in the way of eternal life. O oh God, lead me in battle against my secret sins. Fence around my life with a shield of hope and commitment. And let Christ be formed in my heart through faith. All this I ask for in his holy name's sake. Amen. All right, friends, it was a pleasure and a joy to be with you tonight as it was, as it is always. Um, some of you may follow me on Facebook, may have seen a picture of my new hairstyle that my wife helped me to get today. 
Here's, here's what it looks like. It looks a little bit worse, I think, live than it does on the picture. She got a little close on it with the trimmer. So anyway, um, when you see me at worship on Sunday and wonder what's going on, with that's, it's, she's sitting right over there is what's going on uh, with, my, with, with my noggin. But anyway, want to leave you with that, bringing a little joy on this Friday night. Hope you have a good night's rest. Uh, tomorrow we'll have a video posted that will sum up the rest of this week. Go to church, go to worship, find an online service, do something on Sunday to worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll be back here with you live Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock each and every night as we continue our journey through the Gospel of John. Until then, have a great night, a wonderful, blessed weekend, and God bless.